start rethinking a lot of the behaviors that got us to this place where we are right now. Our civilization has developed tremendous technology, tremendous innovation, tremendous financial tools, uh, you know, financial, uh, you know, financial products uh, that have allowed for the leveraging of wealth, for, the, for putting, putting you know, wealth into a sort of an exponential growth that has allowed us to invest capital in so many of the great project and productions that we put together, the great technologies, the great solutions that have brought us to this place. However, right now, at the beginning of the 21st century, we need to start shifting our focus and rethinking so much, so many of the behaviors that got us to this place, that it's going to be extraordinarily difficult, extraordinarily challenging for us to do that the right way. Uh, I am, however, extremely hopeful that we are going to be able to. Uh, I have hope for a, for a lot of different reasons, not least because I spend a lot of my time talking to young people who show me that it is possible to dream of a different world, to be idealists, to, to be ready to embrace change and to challenge, challenge the status quo, to challenge to our assumptions and our habits uh, and try to think differently. My own personal challenge in politics uh, is to, to try and bring a little bit of that to politics where we're less concerned with the immediate crises we're in. I mean, in politics, we're always dealing with what's urgent. We rarely deal with what's truly important. And that shift is something the politicians can be part of, but only if uh, the citizens, our society, is willing to go along with that kind of shift. The politi politicians who said, look, I'm going to start governing for a generation from now um, without having support of people uh, in terms of uh, what we're going to do immediately in terms of steps to get there uh, is not going to be long for office. And there is a short of, sort of short-term mentality that's brought in by our politics and by our society. The, the, what have you done for me lately? How are you going to get me out of this? Now. We'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow, or we'll worry about next week or next year, next week or next year. Um, and to start to think again about a grander vision, a narrative, a story we're fitting in about where we need to go in the future and what steps we need to take to get there um, is the kind of conversation that I and, and others like me are beginning to have around politics and the resonance that we're hearing uh, from groups like you guys, or from environmental groups and, and uh, you know, citizen groups across this country and around the world uh, is really a, a, a definite cause for hope. So uh, that's sort of the uh, that's sort of the overview of my my thinking on environment right now. And I guess we can sort of open it up to, to questions if sure. you'd like. Sure, I'll be glad to do that. Any questions for Justin on the floor? Justin, I have a question for you. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you just fine, Derek. Perfect. Um, what is, what's happening in the, in, in the House, what's happening in Ottawa to support incentives for green technology from a federal perspective for the new home, uh, new home builder? Any thoughts? Um, listen, obviously there's, there's a big conversation that we have to have. Various, various uh, eco-energy uh, retrofits, eco-investments, uh, there have been various programs about getting an energy audit on your home. I know Ontario uh, has put in, uh, put in that requirement. Um, there's a lot of talk, sort of piecemeal, about incentives it. here, about ideas there, about you know, trying to put in tougher building codes, but it's, there's, there's not a sense of, of a grand vision or purpose around it. Different municipalities are requiring different things, different provinces are bringing things in, and, and on an issue like the environment, it's, it's exactly the kind of place where the federal government needs to step up, needs to step forward, and, and take a, a, a clear role and say, look, this is where we want to go. This is where we need to go. These are the expectations that we're going to have for next year, for five years from now, for 10 years from now, to allow uh, home builders to, to adapt, to, to look for solutions, to, to, to begin to understand where we're going. I mean, we've been a lot of 
talking about, a, you know, we need to go towards more efficiency, we need to start doing this, we, we can try and encourage that, but there hasn't been the sense of strength in announcing where it is we're going, how we're going to get there, uh, and, and what is going to be required of uh, a home builder, a home seller, a home purchaser, uh, in, in a sense that, that you can actually account for. Listen, if we're going to turn around and say you really should do this, but it's not going to be mandatory, and the buyer might not really know about the fact that you've done this, it's really hard to justify an extra $10,000 or whatever it is you know, for a unit built for a builder, for, 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 for anyone who's selling. Until we set in a very clear set of standards, whether it be you know, leads based or, or, or Canadian uh, in, its, in its response or whatever, until we start setting up a strong and firm framework, uh, the federal government isn't living up to its responsibility Agreed. to be overseeing sort of a grand sense of what it means to Agreed. be Canadian, to live in Canada, to I live in a home built in Canada, those kinds of things. I work for the federal government like you do. I'm, I'm, I'm not buying that. I, I, I absolutely agree with what you're saying there. It's really easy. In fact, I work from, with all of the builders' side divisions to try and organize um, information for the builders in this region so that they can function. And I've got to tell you, it's been more of a challenge than anything I've ever done previously. I really want to thank you for coming here today. I'm going to be sending a report from the summit to you today because what we're doing is we're creating a model for infrastructure change. And Majora is going to be involved in that as well, and I'm sure you're well aware of who she is. Um, so I think that it's going to be a situation where we're going to be able to provide some of the answers from the systemic perspective. What I've asked these wonderful people to do today is to, to give me what they're married to. What is the status quo? What can we not get away from? And then the idea is let's take a look at what we can manage to change within what we've got to work better. You're on board, I'm on board. Wonderful. <laughs> I'll go ahead and I'll get that to your office. Please do. Please do. I look forward to reading it. I look forward to, uh, to continuing this conversation uh, in, in, in different shapes, ways, and forms. Fair enough. Thanks so much for joining us today.